forced closure, it will be a resource allocation decision on what makes best for the community based on health care resources and sick care resources. Yep. So if that hospital goes yep. under, then yep. those employees lose their insurance. So now Correct. you've kind of lost a ton of your population, and yep. especially your risky population. Yep. So I look at that, you know, if, if you get back to my MBA class in, in, in Simon School, University of Rochester, and, and what my ec economics professor would say at the time is he said, we are going to take resources that are not fully utilized um, to benefit society and redeploy them to something that's more beneficial. Um, we have an unemployment rate right across the United States of what, like 4.5% or something like that? I mean, there's a need for a workforce out there. And, and, and as the baby boomers you know, kind of continue to age up into that group, there's going to be more of a need. So I, I look at that, yeah, we will lose jobs in the short run, but they will redeploy to something that will more be beneficial to society. I think. You guys can push back, right? right? You guys are here to think. How do you see the critical access status and legislation changing as this payment model? Not at all. The market's going to solve. This right here will solve the critical access hospital payment because ultimately cost-based reimbursement in critical access hospitals is a phenomena of fee-for-service reimbursement. Right. And as fee-for-service reimbursement goes away, uh, I actually like cost-based reimbursement because it's a form of budget-based reimbursement, right? So a critical access hospital gets $15 million. Guess what? Uh, it, it, and that's Medicare pays them their cost. If, if in a budget-based system, they're going to get $15 million. So I kind of like, critical access hospital loosely <laughs> sets us up for actually what the new payment system could be. What else? Quick, 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 we're running out of time. Tell me. Uh -huh. okay, so I just am wondering how does all of these, these plans align with what's happening on like a national and federal level? Because there's a lot of talk on like healthcare, like on law, so like if they change the way, if they repeal the ACA, or if they, repeal, or yep. they get yep. Medicare for all, yep. how does this still happen because then the insurance rate of so, so it gets back to that equation of, of patient value uh, is, is, a, is a function of quality of our costs applied to a population. And I look at it and say, this is a market force. This is a three and a half million dollar economic force that's moving right now. Um, I don't, th it, the train can't stop. <laughs> this is a locomotive with a whole bunch of engines running on it and you can't stop this thing. So, so you know whether you know whether um, you know c Congress. Think, you know, there's there's a, this week, right? A, a, a judge in Texas is hearing a case that they're, they're trying to throw out the individual mandates and or they, the yeah. they they're trying to throw out the uh, pre-existing conditions and some of these things. I look at it and say, as these large systems evolve and compete on value with other large systems, those things will be a, come in through the market rather than a forced uh, legislative or uh, regulatory activity. The larger systems that want more lives have enough lives to diversify insurance risk may, may offer insurance to, to pre, people with pre-existing conditions as a way to compete and, uh, and get more people into their health system. So I see that more, I see that more um, evolving through a market-based um, market event than, than regulatory. Or legislative. What else do you think? Anything? Oh, last question. Uh, we're out of time. We're out of time. We have a whole other hour and a half. Um, <laughs> tagging on to Sarah's question, the, the outlier then of catastrophic diagnoses and where they fit, yeah. and the accusations from uh, populations of uh, us now rationing care. Um, I trust that what you're saying will work out on the macro level, but on the micro level, with yeah. You know, a 25 year old new mom with glioblastoma that yep. needs care. Yep. Um, I know there's no quick way to answer this. Well, I, I think the way, that, the, the, the way we got to answer this is, is to truly diversify insurance risk. You're talking about a risk diver insurance risk diversification, right? That, that we've got to have, you know, we talk about 100,000 lives, but here in Pennsylvania, you look at how many covered lives does UPMC have right now? A couple million? Three and a half million. So, so you're, you're, you are completely diversified from insurance risk when you have three and a half million covered lives. And, and I think what you're going to see around the country is each state, you know, as we start to evolve this thing, you know, as we move to this end right here, provider-based, these are, ta we're talking about million lives in these provider-based health systems. And again, Pennsylvania is 
has you guys you have moved the, the in terms of the form you haven't figured out all the function yet here in Pennsylvania I think Geyser may be closest but I'm not sure even about that Kaiser is the only one and Kaiser is literally figured out because they, they don't take anyone they really don't take any of their patients unless they're part of their premium their insurance plan so revenue is premium dollars almost pure Everything else is a re all the expenses are resource allocation decision. And right now, their record growth and record profit, like the last like eight quarters, record growth and profit. Because I, if I'm them, I price just under everybody else my insurance pro uh, my insurance product because I can deliver the cost at probably you know you know eighty percent of the cost of what others can do it for because it, they've figured it out and they're really making resource allocation decisions around investments in healthcare and sick care. I appreciate all you guys' time. I'm running way over, so thank you. All right, go state. <laughs> oh.